Good morning. Today is Friday, March 19, 2021. On Tuesday, in Atlanta, Georgia, six women of Asian descent were murdered by a killer. In the last year or so in the U.S., anti-Asian hate crimes have risen 1,900% relating to about 4,000 hate-related incidents. Two-thirds of those, approximately about 70% of those attacks, have been against women. And there is a similar rise in hate actions, hate crimes against Asian Canadians right here, including in Montreal. And the dramatic rise is clearly linked by any objective observer to the terrible rhetoric over the past year connected with COVID-19 led by Donald Trump, who referred to the disease over and over in terms that seemed to link it to Chinese people, not just Donald Trump, but members of his administration, continuing today with those who align themselves with him, just as one example of thousands in New York, a white woman was charged with a hate crime after she bumped into an Asian woman crossing the street and said, you're the reason why the coronavirus is here, before spitting on her and pulling out some of her hair. It is unavoidable the connection between political rhetoric, irresponsible political rhetoric, words, and the harm it causes, and the damage, and the danger in which it places people. The use of racist terms, this is one expert who was speaking, the focus on a society or culture as the cause for the COVID-19 pandemic, and policies that demonize immigrants, all constitute to an atmosphere where racism and xenophobia is legitimized. Now, as Jews, our connection, our need to speak out about this is even greater. Starting from our fundamental religious belief that every single being is created B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. Not only must we recognize that every human being is entitled to being treated with dignity and fairness and never with de uh, discrimination or hatred, but we should recognize how much this mirrors our own history. There is a long history of diseases triggering waves of violence and that has affected Jews during time of black death, as well as Africans during time of Ebola, SARS, Zika. Groups get lumped together and spat on, literally and figuratively. As some people fine scapegoats for the things that are going wrong, going wrong around them. This is against Jewish law. This is against Jewish values. And this ignores that we ourselves have suffered this also. Second to the horrors of the loss of life 
and the attacks is the wider societal unwillingness or inability to call these claims hate crimes. So what happens if you're part of a group and you're seeing racism and sexism and violence on an ongoing basis and the wider society cannot bring itself to recognize that this group is being targeted for hatred and violence. It is as if they are made to feel that they are invisible. And that's an even further crime against a group. Concerning the specific issue in the crime in Atlanta, there is a lot that is unclear, but there is discussion about how whether this was a crime against Asians or a crime against women. But what if it was both? And it certainly happens to, to, to be expressed across North America for sure. This intertwining of misogyny and racism. Don Lee, a community activist who spoke at a rally in Atlanta said, let's call it what it is. These are not random attacks. We're asking for recognition that these crimes are happening. Representative Ted Lieu spoke before the House Judiciary Committee on Thursday. And he said, I am not a virus. And when you say things like that, it hurts the Asian American community. Whatever political points you think you're scoring by using ethnic identifiers in describing this virus, you're harming Americans who happen to be of Asian descent. And your president and your party and your colleagues can talk about issues with any other country that you want, but you don't have to do it by putting a bullseye on the back of Asian Americans across this country, on our grandparents, on our kids. And that is precisely what is happening. And keep in mind, the experts in public health remind us that it is not just the victims of these crimes who suffer. The harm is not in those who were physically hurt or verbally abused, but in the mental and physical impact in the broader community. Everyone within this community is suffering because they are under attack. And so this represents a public health crisis, not just in the immediate sense, but to the wider community that is now suffering. As Jews, we have three specific responsibilities, three specific reasons to stand with Asians, especially our neighbors, our colleagues, our friends, in calling this racism, in supporting Asians, Asian Canadians, Asian Americans, in never engaging in language that is based on stereotypes or derogatory terms. The Rambam says, Maimonides writes in his Mishnah Torah, his legal work, Hamachan Hashem L'chavero, a person who uses a negative nickname for someone else. Just think about how often this happens against Asian Americans, Asian Canadians. A nickname or some other way of making fun or deriding or showering indignity. Ain lo chelek va'olam haba. Such a person has no share in the world to come. God doesn't want them nearby. 
אין לו חלק לעולם הבא. For me, there are two more personal layers. I have the privilege to teach at McGill. And every year in my class, I have Asian students. My relationship with students is not simply to stand in the front of the class or in front of the screen and deliver lectures. My role as a teacher is to have a relationship with students that recognizes them as human beings and that cares about them as human beings. If one of my students gets sick, I'm worried about them. If one of my students doesn't show up, it's not just that I'm concerned about the attendance grade, but I'm worried about what happened to them. Especially this year, and this is something I don't want to take credit for it myself, uh, all professors, all teachers have, have been uh, prepared that we need to look out not only for our students' scholastic activities, but we need to look out for students who are struggling as a result of COVID, who are struggling as a result of what we're going through, and find ways to reach out to provide resources to, to help. The idea that some of my students are suffering now because of what is happening within this larger group, that's something that causes me tremendous personal pain. And lastly, as the head of a conversion program, there are many, many people from the Asian world who convert to Judaism through our program. We believe that our program, that our conversion program is changing the face of what it means to look like a Jewish person. Because today, a Jewish person can be a person with Asian features and African features and every other type of features from different parts of the world because they have been in our program. They are Jews, just like you and just like me. And we believe that part of what we are doing is helping the Jewish world to be able to see that there is no Jewish look. There is no standard well, this is what I would expect a Jew to look like. As we get more used to seeing Jews with different features and different colors who are part of our community, who work hard to be part of our community and who must be respected by our community. The repetition in the Torah of the prohibition against saying anything negative about one who converts to Judaism and the repeated mitzvah of ahavas hager, of love to show to one who is converted to Judaism. These are hallmarks of what it means to be a Jew, especially before Pesach. Because Pesach is the time when this lesson is essential. It is an intrinsic aspect of what we mean when we talk about going out of Egypt. The Torah over and over and over tells us what lesson we should learn from having been in Egypt and gone out is that we should never ever allow discrimination and persecution against any other group. Lo sonu es hager, Never mistreat someone else who looks different, who speaks differently than you. Because you had that experience. It is intrinsic to Pesach. It is unavoidable on Pesach. The Pesach includes our commitment to making sure that others who are seen as dis different are not treated differently but are treated with love and respect. 
That is what Judaism calls for. That is what Pesach calls for. And I would urge every one of us at our Pesach Seder, this is an essential element of what we must discuss. We, the Jewish people, must be at the forefront of supporting Asian Americans, Asian Canadians, Asians, at the forefront of fighting hatred, discrimination, and acts of terrorism. We say to the Asian community, both around us locally, as well as in a wider sense, we have experienced what you experience. We are outraged by what is happening to you. We will not ignore it. We will not resist defining it and calling out those who lead towards it by their irresponsible words. And we will stand with you. My friends, I wish you a good day. I wish you a pleasant and harmonious Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.